The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. Side by side, in the center of Prospect City, stood two unpainted frame buildings. In appearance, they differed little. Through their doors, at one time or another, passed every gold-seeking man in the Yukon. One was Sam's General Store. The other, Dorner's Bank, held gold from some of the richest loads in the north. Midwinter, the light of day fading quickly to early darkness, Phil Dorner's worst fears were realized. Put him up, Dorner. Oh, hold up. Yeah, one sound out of you, and you'll be stiffer these boards. Go ahead, boys. Clean out the till, Marty. I'll take care of the safe. Wait a minute, Jonas. What for? There's no use of you skinning your fingers open in that safe, as long as Dorner here can turn the combination. Say, that's right. And you heard me, Dorner. Get over there to that safe. No. No, I won't open it. You can... <laughs> All right. I'll open it. But you won't get away with this, I tell you. Shut up and open that safe. We ain't here to talk. Let me at that stuff. Wait till Meade sees this hall. I got the dust on the till, Bat. Good. Let's get out of here now. Dorner, if you want to live long enough to talk about this, you better not turn around till we're out of sight, you understand? You're as good as behind bars already. With Sergeant Preston in town, there ain't dogs running that'll save you. <laughs> yeah, you'll laugh on the other side of your mouth, you sneaking coyote. It's too noisy, Marty. Yeah. I reckon we better shut him up. What do you want? I'll... <clears throat> Come on. I don't like staying in one place too long. Be quite a while before Sergeant Preston hears anything from you, banker. A little later, a miner stopping to deposit some dust found Phil unconscious on the floor. The alarm spread quickly. Outraged miners and trappers mobbed the bank, while the banker, his hand to his head, told Sergeant Preston the story. How many of them were there, Phil? Three. They was talking of another one, a fellow named Mead. You say they even made you open the safe? Yeah. I tell you, Sergeant, I didn't have a chance. There was three guns ready to crack. I know. Almost any man would have done the same thing, Phil. $22,000 I had in that safe. What do you aim to do about it? Go after them. They're killers. Sounds to me as though this robbery is tied up with some others that have been committed on the coast. If I'd only drawn it out yesterday when I had a mind to... Well, I'd just as soon have lost it gambling, well, but... Well, the... you heard what the sergeant said, didn't you? You ain't the first one to lose money to this gang. But you'll be among the last to lose money to them. Come on, King. You gonna trail them? Well, you'll need help. King's all the help I'll need. See if you can get my 22 Oh, 000. shut up, Eb. Well, I was just... Remind... Up, King. Well, if anyone can get them varmints, Preston will do it. Oh, King! Oh, you husky! There he goes. Yeah? Seems like an awful big job for one man to handle... What you need is a drink, Phil. Come on, close the door. You don't have to bother locking it now. Ain't nothing more to be took. Maybe you're right. Sure, I'm right. You'll feel better before you know it. The great dog King followed the trail closely, never once hesitating. Faster than any dog in the Yukon, he was a stern leader, setting the pace for Preston's Huskies. On and on they raced, the distance between the Mounty and the criminals shrinking with every mile. On King! On you Huskies! <laughs> For 
Further along the trail, heading for a hideout cave, Bat urged his team on. Hush, you Malamutes! Hush! Hey, Bat, I think we ought to pull into the protection of them rocks yonder and wait a few hours. If that Molly's on our trail... Yeah, we'll... Bat. That won't hurt to rest the dogs a bit anyway. We can't do it out in the open. It's a good idea. Ho, you Malamutes! Ho! Ho up there! Yeah, we'll be safe enough in here. You're sure worried about Preston, ain't you? Me? Listen, when I came to the Yukon, one of the first things I heard about outside of the gold was Preston. Preston and that dog of his. Believe me, I'm not taking any chances. Ah, he'll never catch us. Yeah, I heard other men say the same thing. The ones that didn't swing for what they'd done are looking out from behind bars now. Well, he'll never put me behind bars. All the same, I'll stand behind these rocks here and keep an eye on the trail. in a little while. Yeah. I feel better when we get to the cave. Just wait till Meade sees this hall. You're getting as bad as Marty here. He'll have us all uneasy. So you thought I was dreaming, did you? Well, take a look. Where? Out there, along the trail. Dog team. Yeah, and you can bet half of that gold we're carrying is Preston. Well, I tell you. Get your guns ready. Lay low and wait for him. My guns have been ready. You better take care of your own. Uh, it is Preston. Oh, oh, Preston. Yeah, he's looking at the trail. That mud of his is smart, all right. So what is it, boy? You're covered, Molly. What? Reach. Easy, boy. Well, Sergeant Preston, I never expected the pleasure of running into you like this. Get his gun, Jonas. And don't try no tricks, Mounty. You got two guns on you. Well, looks like you hold all the aces, boys. Well, what do you aim to do with him, Bat? I don't know. Meade would sure enjoy a chance like this. Meade? You mean... Yeah, the same one. He had his brother hung two years ago. Sam Sunniger, you remember? Come on, boys, we'll take him in with us. To the cave? Yeah, and make sure he ain't packing another gun, Jonas. He ain't. Got one in his sled, though. And we'll toss some of that stuff off his sled. You ride it, Jonas. Preston, you ride in front of me where I can keep an eye on you. If that lead dog of yours, as smart as he's supposed to be, he'll take orders from Jonas. You understand? Did you hear that, boy? <coughs> Steady, boy. Hey, my pack. Ah, don't worry, you won't need it where you're going. Keep his gun on the sled, Jonas. All right, boys, let's mush. <coughs> That night, the bank robbers, with Preston, their prisoner, pulled up at a ledge of the winded steps clean of snow. Obeying orders, the Mountie knew they would keep him alive till the outlaw Meade Sunninger arrived. Ruthless and cunning, Meade would be merciless in avenging his brother. As they entered a deep cave, King kept close to his master, waiting for the word to jump at these men who held a gun on them. But Preston's only command of the dog was to forbid him to touch the drinking water Marty drew from a spring in the hideout. Help me with this gold, What's the matter? Right, Ain't you hungry? Yes, we're hungry. But not thirsty. Suit yourself. Come on over here, Marty. Fire will be a blaze in a minute and you'll get something to eat. Need any help with the fire? No, you don't. Reach for one of them burning sticks and you'll wish you hadn't. Well, don't worry, Bat. I didn't plan to burn you alive. And I ain't taking no chances. <laughs> For the next two days, neither Preston nor King drank any water. Finally, on the morning of the third day, Marty could contain his curiosity no longer. I don't understand it, Molly. It ain't natural. You're not worried about us, are you, Marty? Me? Leave <laughs> him alone, Marty. We don't have much longer to wait for me. I ain't bothering with him. All I want to know is why I don't take a drink of water with the rest of us. Because I don't want to take a chance on poison. That's why, Marty. Poison? Yes. You've been drinking that water for two days now, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the answer. Hey, Bat, do you hear that? What do you mean, Mounty? Well, no more than what I said. How do you feel, Jonas? To tell you the truth, I ain't felt so good. 
Oh, yes, Dan. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. It's the same feeling I have myself. You get a little dizzy every once in a while. Then it goes away. But your stomach bothers you. Yeah. It ain't exactly an ache. I don't know, Marty. The way mine feels, I'd say it was more of an ache. So, how about you, Beth? What? Gee, horse of Look at him. Can you... Can you do anything about this, Preston? Can't you help us? Why, he's whiter than snow. Looks kind of green to me. Step over here in the light till I can get a look at... Marty. Yeah? Yeah, we're done for. No. Maybe the Marty... Oh, I'm sorry, boys. All my medicines are in the pack you threw out on the trail. There must be something to be done. Look at Bat. Hey, you ain't passing out on us, Bat? Hey, look, Marty. We'll set you free if you'll help us. Yeah. Sure. What about Mead? He won't... He won't know anything about it. I'm getting that dizzy feeling again. Name oh. your own price. I can't stand it. I tell you, I... There's only one thing you can do. What? what What's that? It? Sulfur, my help. Sulfur? Well, where are we going to get any? Break your bullets open. Get together all the gunpowder. Then melt some snow from outside. Take a mouthful of gunpowder and wash it down. Hey, where are you going, Bat? To get some snow. Jonas, you and Marty start busting all your bullets open. <laughs> Three men worked feverishly, breaking down their bullets. Bath was the first to swallow the strange antidote. Hey, how much do you have to swallow? You better take another mouthful. No one to take any chances. There. Feel better already? What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Well, King, I'll just leave you boys Wait there. a minute. Well, you promised me I could. I changed my mind. You loco, Bat? I heard Shut you... up. You're not going anywhere, Mounty. Stay where you are. And how do you think you'll stop me, Bat? You've eaten all your bullets. Watch them, King. Why, you... Watch that dog. No! My hand! Let go! Well, a good thing you left my gun on the sled, Bat. All right, King. My hand. Get over there against the wall. Neat. Watch them, King. One of them makes a sound, you know what to do. Reach, Meat. I said reach. That's right. We meet again, Meat. You and your bank robbers are coming back to Prospect City with me. Then to Dawson and jail for all of you. Why don't you shoot him? How do you ever get the drawing yet? Why, he made us eat our gunpowder, Mead. Eat your gunpowder? The boys here felt they had a touch of water poison. Yeah, Mead. We was drinking the water here in the cave, and he's... Water here in the cave? There ain't nothing wrong with this water. There probably isn't. Rob said it was poison. I didn't say anything about it being poisoned. I only said I don't take a chance on poison, Bat. Your own imaginations took care of the rest. (laughs) Yes, King, the case is closed. Upholding the motto of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston and the Great Dog King maintain the right and get their man. Don't miss their next thrilling adventure when they meet the challenge of the Yukon once again on Saturday at 6.30. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.